Service Above Self is Rotary's theme, and we are all about serving others. In uh, 1917, Arch Klump, who was president, decided that we needed to do goodwill in the world. There was $26.50 left over from their meeting, and they started the foundation with $26.50. And the objective was to do good in the world. Now, since that time, there's been over $2.1 billion given by Rotarians to do good work in the world. I'm impressed, too, with how we help people with what seems so basic to us. And I mean, even the polio vaccine or clean water. In 1985, uh, we established a program called Polio Plus. Our objective was to eradicate polio in the free world. Since the, that beginning, we have eradicated polio in all except two countries, of which politically we have not been able to get into. One of our club members has a passion for international projects and, and taking care of children and communities. Mm -hmm. And she envisioned a water project, uh, putting a well in one community so that the people could have access to safe drinking water without having to walk days and days to get not too safe drinking water. So she, with the Rotary Club's help, built a well in this community. While she was there, she found a need in an, in an orphanage for the same thing and was able to use some of the Rotary money and our club support to build a well at an orphanage so the children there have access to safe drinking water. Through a program called Health, Hunger, and Humanitarian Efforts, Rotary has given $600 million to provide processes in countries like Cambodia or the Braille typewriter in places like Brazil, or clean water in places like Haiti or Nigeria. Rotary has been about doing good throughout the world. We give very freely. Uh, most of that in the past has been to the international uh, fund, and we have developed a local charitable fund <laughs> and we're doing more and more to support uh, needy people and organizations around our county. Over the years through uh, the Pancake Day and some other things we've done, had monies that we have raised locally for special things we want to do in the community. But from time to time, uh, things will come up that we can't fund. It's, it's a big need, it's a $10,000 need or a $25,000 need. Uh, that we would like to help, but we can't scramble and raise that kind of money quickly. And our other funds that we had set up have already been spent because we had, we, we had planned for them and we raised the money and we spent it. So a few years ago, we just said, we need, we need a local foundation that has, can, can develop a, a fund balance, and when these things come along, we can help. Give me an example. Well, one is the, the Hawkins family that... Uh, that had a, a terrible experience with the uh, tornado in Hendersonville. Uh, Jared Hawkins was a Brentwood fireman. Uh, his wife was at home when that happened, uh, protected the two little boys, uh, and ended up uh, being paralyzed from the, from the waist down. Uh, she literally threw herself on top of she her did son. To preserve, did she did. The debris covered her up from the house uh, and saved the little boys. They just barely were scratched, but she had significant damage to her back and, and hips. They needed some things, and one of the things they needed was uh, a handicap-equipped van. For me, the historic moment was when we used our local foundation funds to provide a minivan for the Hawkins family. I think one of the great memories I will always have is seeing those children when they looked at that van and says, it has a TV. <laughs> <laughs> that was a day that you look at at Rotary and say, you know, I'm really glad that I'm involved with this group. The Brentwood Rotary Club was involved in providing the van, but many people may not be aware of the fact that the Rotary Clubs throughout Middle Tennessee were the catalyst that got them on the extreme home makeover. Really? Absolutely. How did we, that happen? 
We went from club to club to club getting signatures. The Brentwood Club initiated this. The Brentwood Club initiated this. And uh, the uh, television station said they had never had as many people sign a petition as for the Hawkins family. Well, our club is very active. Uh, at least once a quarter, we have a special event outside of our, our luncheon meetings and some of our service opportunities that we offer on an ongoing basis. We started uh, in 1978 uh, a pancake breakfast, and it has truly become a community event. People look forward to the first weekend in April of each spring knowing that that's the Brentwood <laughs> pancake breakfast, and we serve anywhere from 1,200 to 1,500 uh, people, pancakes and sausage, uh, and, and again, it is truly a delight uh, to see the entire community to come together for that event. Now, this year, we, we have added, in addition to a, a morning of pancake eating, <laughs> we've decided to add something that's a little bit more healthy, which is our Charles Black Memorial 5 and 10K Run, the Run for Rotary. We are expecting a huge turnout. This event is being held every April now, two weeks before the uh, Music City Marathon. Yeah. So what a great way to train for mm -hmm. the marathon is to do our run first. We have been involved now for 18 years with the Tennessee Baptist Children's Home. Uh, we take up money on a volunteer basis just within our membership, within our organization, and we buy Christmas presents for the children uh, at the children's home. It's helpful that we are all contributing like to the Baptist Children's Home. I mean, that's, that's a great event that Mike Huff started years ago and, uh, and it's, it's fun to go out there at Christmas time and see the smiles on their faces and, 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 and the congeniality and the food and the friendships. Every September, we have a picnic over at Granny White Park. Mm -hmm. And this is uh, an event that we inaugurated after 9-11. Uh, of 2001, we decided that this would be a great time for us to thank our local uh, service providers, the policemen, the firemen, the EMTs, everyone who works for the public in the city of Brentwood. So this event now is six years old, and every September we get a chance to thank our police and firemen. We give them gifts, we honor them uh, with a special award for the outstanding fireman, policeman, EMT dispatcher for the year. And it's just a great chance to be together outside and also celebrate our service personnel. Anytime we get involved in functions, whether it's cleaning up the Little Harpeth River, whether it's uh, having the pancake breakfast or the forthcoming uh, 5K run they were having, um, you get so many people that are interested in their involvement in it. They want to be involved in it and they want to work together and it's just been a great relationship. Our club has a great reputation for doing things to give back to the community. And one of the things on our plate that is our big project for the future would be to build a community center in Brentwood. Brentwood has a lot of places for very small meetings, but no places for large meetings, not only for Rotary Club meetings or Chamber of Commerce meetings, but for wedding receptions and large corporate gatherings. So on our plate, the Brentwood Rotary Club is looking for new fundraisers and new things we can do in the community to be able to leave a legacy behind of a community center. Why should somebody want to join Rotary Club? Well, the main reason that I even investigated Rotary was the fact that I've been very successful and I really felt like that I needed to give back to the community, uh, to those that, that don't have as much as I do. Uh, but what I've got out of it is a lot of friends and a lot of people that I've met that I would not otherwise have had an opportunity to meet and they're of all stratas of life, and, and most of them are very, very interesting. And all of them are people that I could call on for a favor or for some help or for some information that I need. If you go back to the founding of Rotary in 1905, mm -hmm. there were four members. Each one of them had a different career. Paul Harris was an attorney. Another person was in the coal business. And the whole key to Rotary was we're going to meet at each other's office each week, thus they rotated where they met, that's the name Rotary, but they shared with each other different careers. And, and one of the great things about Rotary is when you're sitting at a table, you may be sitting next to an engineer, you may be sitting next to a banker, you may be sitting next to a newscaster <laughs> uh, or an attorney, 
and, and you learn from all that. The image of most civic clubs, Rotary Club maybe in particular, is that it's a bunch of older white men, not very friendly. I've attended some clubs, and sometimes that stereotype is, is well deserved. <laughs> but in, in our particular club, uh, I found that not to be the case. Uh, we are a very diverse club, and while uh, there are more men in the club than there are women, that is quickly changing. The Brentley Rotary Club has really got a lot of great ideas on the plate for the future. Again, we're looking to reach out to new members who are young people. We are looking for diversity of members. We have a lot of different businesses represented, but some are not. And the success of a good club is to have great diversity, not just in, in age or sex or race, but also in type of business that you're in, so we can all learn from each other. Because it's fun to meet uh, and talk to different people that have different ideas on different subjects, rather than everyone being a banker and everyone being you know, in the music business or the car business, whatever. But one of the things that, that the club does to uh, welcome members in and get them acclimated is what we call fireside chats. And that's where usually the, the president uh, invites eight to ten of the newest members over for a couple of hours of conversation and getting to know each other and getting to know uh, about the club or, and having any questions that they have answered about the club. So overall it, it takes a very short amount of time for someone to feel welcome and feel like it's their club as, a part of, as opposed to being a member of somebody else's club. The first reason I became a member is uh, one of my clients uh, who's a member of the club invited me to come. And he said, we're going to have fun. And you're going to have a good meal. And you're going to hear some great programs. And one of the things that's been really good about our club is we've been able to have some outstanding programs. We've had such a great program of speakers. Uh, and very interesting programs, everybody from uh, Tim Corbin, who's the head baseball coach of Vanderbilt, to the president of Bridgestone. And learn some very interesting things and get to meet some interesting people that way. Why obligate yourself to be there every Friday? Because you do take on a membership obligation when you join Rotary Club. You sure do, and that was uh, something that I had to think about before I joined, uh, being a, a, in business and being very busy. I thought, golly, you know, that's, that's a, a fifth of the lunches I can have <laughs> during the entire year. But as I looked at it, I, I, I thought, number one, I can make up meetings uh, at other clubs and fulfill my attendance uh, requirement. But as I started attending meetings, I found that I really enjoyed the club, the people that are in it, their character, and the things that, that we do. Chris, here's the four-way test of the things we think, say, and do. We use this to start every Rotary meeting, and honestly, I think most Rotarians try to use it as something that they live by every day. First, is it the truth? Second, is it fair to all concerned? Third, will it build goodwill and better friendships? And fourth, will it be beneficial to all concerned? Some people say that for a club to succeed, uh, you have to have good food and good programs. <laughs> but, but the truth of the matter is, the success of, of our club is the fellowship we have with each other and, and the good things we do uh, together.